Hey guys, Theo Joe Tech. I made a video recently on my other comedy channel which involved me playing a video game with a guitar. It's, it sounds a little bit ridiculous, but it was kind of like just an experiment to see if it would work because it just sounds so ridiculous. It's really difficult to play games with it. It's utterly useless, but hopefully you'll find it entertaining and interesting. And you know, you might learn something along the way that you can use for something else. Now to do this, you're gonna need several pieces of software, some of which are free, some of which are trials, and then a little bit of hardware to actually connect the guitar. So first things first, the guitar itself, basically you just need to be able to connect it to the computer. Now to do that, I'm actually using a Rocksmith tone cable, which is basically a you know guitar to USB cord, but if you have any type of adapter that'll plug into the back of the computer, it doesn't have to be USB, that should work as well. Next, you're gonna need a digital audio workstation. I'm using FL Studio, but really any of them that support VST plugins should work. FL Studio is not free, but there is a trial version that the only difference is you can't open projects. You can save them, but it doesn't take long to set up, so you can just use the trial version. Next, we need a piece of software called Midgic. This is a free VST plugin that is used with the FL Studio or any other DAW. Basically, what this does is converts the audio signal into a MIDI signal. Now, if you have a guitar MIDI pickup, like if you're really into guitar and stuff, you might have something like that, then you can just use that directly and not even need the DAW. But this is gonna basically convert the audio signal to a computer signal. Next, you're gonna need a piece of software called Loop B1. It's free, and basically what this does is tunnels the MIDI signal between programs. So the next one I'm gonna talk about, you need the Loop B1 program to connect FL Studio to that. The last piece of software is called Boom MIDI Translator. I'm using the Pro Trial version. This is not a free program, it costs like 100 bucks, but the trial version works for everything. You can only just use it for 20 minutes at a time. Now this piece of software basically takes that MIDI signal and converts it into keystrokes. And then those keystrokes get put into the game, whatever you're using it for or any other program, and you can use the guitar to control it. And you can actually use any note. So you can use the, you know, the whole string, you can use individual note, that kind of thing, and it should work. All right, so now that you have all the software that you need, I'll put all the links in the description. Let's go to the computer, I'll walk you through it as best I can. It's a little bit complicated. If I forget anything, I'll put a little bit more in the description, so if there's something that I didn't explain well, let me know, and also check that description before leaving a comment. So let's see how to do it. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna assume that you have all the software I mentioned installed. Now, one thing to mention is when you install FL Studio, you want to install the ASIO for all drivers, and that is basically a sound device driver that is gonna allow lower latency, so there's not a big delay when you you know pluck the string and when the event happens. So once you get into FL Studio, after everything's set up, that's the first thing you wanna do is set up the ASIO for all device. So you go to Options, Audio Options, and then switch from primary sound driver to ASIO for all, and then you wanna go to show panel, and then select the audio device, whichever your guitar is plugged into. For mine, this is the Rocksmith USB guitar cable. All right, so once that's set up, then you want to create a new channel, which is called MIDI out. And we're gonna let that sit for a second, and we're not gonna, we're gonna come back to it. Then you want to go to the mixer and click a channel. It can be master or a channel, uh, whatever. Right away, you can go to in, and then select whichever input is yours. These are the same, but only adapter one works. So make sure you. Uh, and also, this is mono, so pick whichever one works. And then you need to select. Midgic, this was the VST plugin I mentioned. Now, if it doesn't show up, make sure that you put the DLL file. Sometimes FL Studio doesn't recognize it if it's not in the right folder, so, which is program files, image line, FL Studio 11, plugins, VST, and you can see it just popped right in there. I think the default location is Steinberg for some reason, VST plugins. So you can just copy that into the FL Studio folder. All right, so once you have this up and running, and if you can't get it up and running, check out the VST plugins documentation for FL Studio. 
All right, so next we have Midgic Open. The speed is basically just, you know, how quickly interprets the notes, I guess, with at the cost of accuracy and then sensitivity. I don't really know what all this other stuff is. Don't worry about that. Audio, you know, you can have it play back. Don't worry about any of this either. What you want to do at this point is go to the little gear option and you want to do output port and set it to zero or whatever you want. I'm going to set it to zero. Now you can bring it back up if you close it. You can come back. Now let me show you what this does. Basically, if you pluck a string, I don't know if you can hear it, it will say, all right, well, this is the note you're playing. And then the velocity is basically how hard you're playing it. You probably want it to max out. So I recommend turning up the volume of the guitar and everything maximum. And that's because, you know, there's a, it's technically a different signal for different velocities. So the translator is going to see, you know, one velocity and think it's a different thing and it might not register. So just max it out at 127 and then it should be fine no matter how hard you hit it really. So, all right, now that we have this all set up, it's recognizing the notes and we have it outputting the MIDI signals to this port. Then we're going to go back to this MIDI out channel that we added and that comes up over here. And then what you do is you change here whatever port to that port that you set in this gearbox. So mine's at zero already and we should be good to go. Then we need to go to the MIDI settings and this is where we use loop B and you need to select that, set the port to zero and then click send master sync and then that should be set up don't worry about input so you have this set to output loop B and then it's ready to be accepted by the other program and then I believe that is everything that you need for the FL Studio side and this can run in the background this will keep going so then you need to open up the MIDI translator pro trial and as you can see with the trial version, you only get 20 minutes, but that'll work probably if you're just testing it out. Now, what you're looking at here is I've already created a set of translators. All right, so first things first, basically what we're going to do is set up the translator and you want to do incoming MIDI message. And then I think the default might be note on, but I usually use raw system exclusive. You can try both. And then what you want to do is hit capture MIDI and this is going to basically listen. Now, so once you pluck a string, it's going to get that and you you want to capture it pretty quickly because, you know, as the note changes, as it gets quieter, that's going to change. So you kind of want to stop it so you can see. And then as you can see, this is E2 down here, raw MIDI message, E2 velocity 127. So that's basically, you know, just plucking that top string. And then so that's set down here and then that's automatic so you don't have to change it and then you do rules uh, actually we're not going to touch rules right now what we're going to do is outgoing and then you do keystroke and then you do down as I mentioned before we're going to do separate down and ups and then you pick whichever uh, key you want to do you just type it right in so I'm going to do I'll do a for this and then you do not want a delay so we'll set this to zero and you don't want you do want key repeat probably if you're going to use this for motion that means basically it's going to keep pressing and holding down that key for as long as that's active until you do the up command separately next uh, don't worry about any of the, this other stuff we're going to then duplicate this to do the up now you it's important to duplicate or at least make sure that the incoming trigger is exactly the same because if you have a slightly different up key trigger than down and uh, you trigger the down and then the, the up one doesn't get triggered then you're not gonna it's just gonna keep pressing W or A or whatever letter you have going forever so as you can see this is already set to A you know it's the same thing and then we do up and press A again to get it and then this time we do want a delay so 
one and a half seconds, that's going to be good. That means when you pluck the string, it's going to hold it down for one and a half seconds and then go back up. So this is good if, you know, you're in a game and you want to move, but, you know, you don't want to have to <laughs> pluck the string just to move a tiny little bit each time. You know, it'll let you move, I don't know, or activate whatever action a little bit at a time without, you know, going too long. And then that's it. Then you should be able to open up Notepad to test this out. Let's see. We're going to pluck the E2 string, the E string. And there we go. And then it goes for a second and a half and then stops. And that's all there is to it. You can do this for any, you know, any keystroke. You can do a uh, mouse. And I think the Pro version does a lot more other, more other stuff like uh, there's rules and stuff like that. So yeah, you just go through, do the same thing. You can set different delays for how long. You can have it instant. And you can pretty much have it do whatever you want. And as you can imagine, this would not just work for a guitar. This would work for really any instrument that has MIDI input. And if, you know, the only reason I'm using this this whole midget and all this stuff is because, you know, I don't have a MIDI converter. But if you have a keyboard, for example, that has a direct MIDI output into the computer, well, then you don't even need all this. You can just go directly into the translator. So that might be for you. And that's uh, really all there is to it. All right, that's it. As I said, it's not really that useful, but you know, maybe you thought it was interesting and you can use bits and pieces of this tutorial. So if you guys found this interesting, you can let me know in the comments, like the video. I try to make videos three times a week, so you can subscribe and also check out some other videos on the right hand side. I'll put first the link to the video I made where I actually, you know, play with this guitar. It's on my other channel, which is all comedy, so it's not like this one, but you might still like it. And that's it, so thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time. Have a good one.